So, what am I looking at again? Not more poetry. No, it's more of a, of a treatise on the state of Cybertronian society. I started writing it up in those protests this was shot. There's a chapter here called, After the Ark, Nominus Prime and the Illusion of Progress. You feel pretty strongly about this stuff, huh? This planet is deceased, Impactor, and that's the cure. Non-violent direct action. Why don't we just round up a few hundred of our fellow miners, break out the Parkmasters, and take the center by force? Because the revolution will be about ideas. Taking a new step, uttering a new word, that's what the ruling elite fears the most. Violence solves nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember that the next time I'm being pistol whipped by my supervisor. Now I'm sorry, but I'm not going to clean it up. You spilled it, runt! My name's not Runt, it's Run. I'll buy you another, but I'm not sorting out the mess. I'm not a service droid. Who are you then? One of the Knights of Cybertron? The last of the Progenitors? Alpha Trion's long-lost spark brother? You seem to have forgotten your place in the natural order of things. So why don't you get down on your knees, while you still have knees, and stay there until my friend and I have finished the ten drinks you're gonna buy us. What do you say? Do we have an understanding? Look, Megatron, I hate the ruling elite as much as you do, but inequality is a way of life. Put two people in a room, and one will always try to assert himself over the other. Now apply that to the whole of society. So what's the answer? Accept our lot, spend all our surface time getting tanked up on low grade and a- Hey, before I didn't get drunk, I'd probably let juice to cadets like that throw robots across your rooms. But seeing as I'm five quarters of energy onto the wind, I think I'm going to give them a quick lesson in manners. Wait, what are you going to say to them? I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to do what I always do in these situations, and think with my fist. Full body scan confirms no hidden weaponry, no internal explosives, no body bombs, just an unusually bright spark. I still don't see why we can't just dissect them, just to be sure. Give me ten minutes, a scalpel, and a spot lamp, and I'll sort them into component parts. Give me twenty minutes, and I'll color code them for you. He's a prisoner of war, Ratchet. He has rights. As Saron says if he so much as unscrew his chest plate without his permission, he could be accused of torture. It's ridiculous. Soon we tell him we can refer to him in the third person in case it undermines his self-respect. Well, rights or not, if he tries something funny, I'm using the VMH to calm him down. We'll be just close to him. Freaks me out. Hmm. Well, we're nearly done. Try not to look at him. Perhaps we should scan him one more time, you know. Just in case. He's clean. I don't know what you're expecting to find. Look, you must have heard about the whole black hole thing. What black hole thing? The black hole thing with the eyes and the, and the antimatter. Stuff. Legend has it that- Legend has it? I'm a scientist. Those words make me twitch. They say he can use this weird interdimensional circuitry to siphon antimatter from- From a black hole. You know, in space, so- With respect, Ratchet. That sounds- That just sounds stupid. For safe, just give it the thumbs up. Which means it's safe. Well, as safe as it's ever gonna get. If Megatron was reduced to a head in a jar, I'd still want someone holding down the lid. Look at him. Look at the size of him. That's one hell of an upgrade. New body, but the face never changes. Never underestimate the vanity of tyrants. I appreciate you and Preceptor rendezvousing with us at Sauron. Your legal advice will be invaluable. Let her help. It's not as if anything ever happens on Kimia. Anyway, besides Megatron captured, I had to see for myself. You're not the only one. My troops have been lining up just to look at him. You'd think he was a matrix bearer lying in state. But then, some of them have never seen him up close. I suppose after all this, they need some reminding that he's real. Now, if you'll excuse me, Optimus, I need to find Wilder. There's a workshop on Kimia going spare. Okay, own up. I know you well enough to tell when you're frowning behind that faceplate. Why did he surrender? Really? When Megatron and I last spoke, he was full of the usual sound and fury. But something rang 
hollow. It was like he was playing to the gallery. I wonder whether deep down he really does want all of this to be over. And if so, I can't afford to let my cynicism blind me to what might be our one chance of setting things straight. Optimus, I say this as a friend. No one can blame you for putting this off, but you've got to talk to him properly. I'm not... I'm not putting it off. It's just... I know him, Ironhide. Better than most. Perhaps you'd prefer me to... No. Thank you, but no. It's for me to do. Megatron has always been my responsibility, and in many respects, my greatest failure. Megaton, is it? Tron! Megatron! Right, as in Electron. Got you. And it's Megatron of... Tom. Ah, yes. Here we are. Function, manual laborer, creation date first, cyclo 12, serial number 071980. Hmm, oh, that's weird. No batch hold. Were you forged or constructed code? How is that relevant? I thought we'd move beyond the party. It must be an old question. Ignore it. Looks like this is your first defense, Megatron of Tarn. You've not charged me with anything yet. I'm entitled for legal counsel and a community cube. Someone's dealing with him. They'll be locked. Less impactor. Your friend with the hand? He's at the DMF. He's in a bad way, but at least he can still walk. Unlike those cadets the two of you roughed up. I didn't. I mean, I wasn't. Are they going to be all right? Let's hope so. For your sake. Spring on! I'll take it from here. Omega, give us some privacy. Damn it! Rumbled. You owe me fifty Shannix. Optimus. Megatron. So, how are we going to play this? Are we going to spend the next hour posturing, or are we going to rise to the occasion and actually have a civilized conversation? Rise to the occasion? What is this, a summit meeting? I'm bolted to the wall, I'm riddled with inhibitor chips, and I'm precisely one Ross gesture away from being electrocuted to death. It's hardly conducive to a frank exchange of views. Fair point. Take a seat. Now, what did you want to talk about? You surrendered. Why? I thought we'd already had this conversation. No. We just went through the motions. You provoked me. I reacted. Same as always. What's happening to my... To the Decepticons? Back on Earth, I mean. Who's taken my place this time? Forget the Decepticons. Right now, the war exists only in theory. For the purposes of what follows, there is just me and you and a conversation we've put off for far too long. I've been preoccupied! Worlds to conquer, enemies to crush with my bare hands. I spend most days scrubbing stale oil from my fingers. Megatron, everything you say, do you realize this? Everything you say is steeped in hate. Ha! I learned to hate in a cell much like this one. And I have an Autobot to thank for it. An Autobot with friends in high places who taught me all about violence and its application. No. Live to it. It sustains me. Sometimes I wonder if there's anything else left. Lust, rage, ambition. I've moved beyond them all. In fact, I look back over the last four million years and recognize there have been only two constants. Hate and you. I'm surprised you can differentiate between the two. Let me tell you something, Prime. I don't hate you. Oh, I hate what you represent, and I hate the obstacles you put in my way. But don't think I don't understand why you're trying to stop me. I forgive you that much. And you? Do you hate me? I don't think I've ever heard you say it. Yes. No. I don't know how I feel about you. Hate is too simple a word. Too... easy. It might sustain you, Megatron, but it diminishes me. I am lessened by it. Tell me, were you always the sanctimonious or was it something you had to work at? Behold, the infallible Optimus Prime, wise, charismatic, compassionate, 
a red and blue paragon of virtue. How tiring that must be. The insecurity, the loneliness, the agonizing self-doubt. You speak as if you know me. You don't. I know you better than anyone. And it terrifies you. What terrifies me, if you must know, is the sheer monotony of it all. You and me, trading blows, making threats, going through the motions while everything we care about turns to dust. This war is an exercise in Latin fratricide, a race-wide cry for help. Is it any wonder the Galactic Council has turned its back on us? Is it any wonder that the rest of the universe shields its eyes in abject horror at what we've become? Entire civilizations have risen and fallen in the time it's taken us to get precisely nowhere at all. Ah, but the rules of the game have changed, Prime. Our war is picking up speed. I remember when whole centuries would pass without a single shot being fired. Both sides would spend millennia preparing for battles that would be over by nightfall. And for what, Megatron? For what? I fought to stop you. It's as simple as that. But you, what exactly were you fighting for? I thought I knew, but... Okay, imagine you hadn't surrendered. Imagine you'd won. What would victory look like? What would it mean? Control, dominion, dominion over everything. The Cybertronian race assuming its rightful place a bowelless species. A mechanical master race. Technoism, in other words. But no, that doesn't explain you. Not entirely. Not to my satisfaction. Let's play a game. I am dead. The Autobots are no more. Cybertron, or what's left of it, is yours. A hundred thousand planets have been resculpted, techno-formed, colonized. Whatever. The Decepticon Empire is resplendent. And there you sit, at the center of it all. Now what? Then the real work begins. Repopulation. The rebirth of the Cybertronian race. A new golden age, one that will put the knights of Cybertron to shame. Imagine, a civilization free from conflict, everyone's needs met. No want, no unhappiness, no dissent, peace through tyranny. And what of autonomy, personal responsibility, free will? Where do they fit into your brave new world? They won't be missed. In some respects, we're not that different. Peace, prosperity, contentment. That's what I want, too. I just don't think you can impose those things. Don't even put yourself in the same category as me. I was a visionary. I spoke out. I resisted the weight of the Cybertronian state. And what were you doing? The Senate carved up the planet's population according to notions of utility. Your form dictated your function, and your function dictated your fate. Social engineering in the most literal sense. Someone had to say no. Someone had to say enough. I was that person. Freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Where the hell were you when Cybertronians like me were forced to work in the mines just because we were made that way? I'm not the Cybertronian I was before war broke out. Nor are you. Remember the first time we met? The Rosha campaign. Second cycle 087. The battle for Sherma Bridge. Sherma Bridge? I lost 5,000 Autobots that day. You cost me an army. You cost me an arm! You and that Energon axe of yours. Anyway, you're wrong. We met before then, at Rideon, just before all that Nominus Prime business, before the clamp down. You have a better memory than I do. Either that, or I made a bigger first impression. If it wasn't for Rideon, I wouldn't be sitting here, nor would you. They all stopped to watch, didn't they? On Shanna Bridge. My Decepticons, your Autobots. They all stopped to watch us fight. Wait a second. Which arm? My cannon arm. You always go for the cannon arm. All I remember is you throwing me off the bridge. It took Ratchet six weeks to find all the pieces, and another six to put them back together. Didn't kill you, though, did it? Nothing ever does! Selma Bridge was nothing compared to some of the beatings you've given me over the years. Such as? Such as the battle for Hell's Point, when you took half my face off with your mace attachment. Or, or the siege of Mesenstrad, when you, when I trapped you in the antimatter chamber. 
They practically had to stitch me back together from the blast patterns on the walls. And don't even get me started on Grasnia. You want to play this game? The Wosk Offensive, 3rd Cycle 199. You slice me in two. From shoulder to crotch. Shoulder to crotch. You miss my spot by inches. And what about Radamore? Home to those sentient explosives he was so desperate to protect. Those reduced dissenters. They had to shovel me into the CR chamber. And as for Hell's Point, you used the Tremacorn's geoscope to drop an entire city block on me. My first outing in my new body, and you shattered my transformation cog. I couldn't change shape for the next two years. I was in gun mode, Prime! In gun mode! Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. We could end it, you know. We could end it right now. Because I don't care what's going on outside the cell. I don't care if it's second-rate opportunity has taken your place. Whether it's shockwave, or sound wave, or... or swindle. What it all comes down to, Megatron, is us. You and I. We could end this war right now. Right now, with a handshake. Look me in the eye. Look me in the eye and say you want it ended, and it will end. They want to see you dead, my Autobots. No doubt you're Decepticons too, after what you've done. What about you? Me? I just want to know why you surrendered. Does it matter? Of course it matters. We'll see. We'll see. All I'm saying is that there's a lot riding on how we deal with him. The intergalactic community has no time for us. Autobots or Decepticons. As far as they're concerned, we're just as bad as each other. If you deal with him internally, if you put him before a military tribunal, we'll be accused of rigging the outcome. Exaron's right. If Megatron strives to have any legitimacy at all, it needs to be carried out in public which means we hand him over to a third party, someone who sits outside the war. Chief Justice Tarvist. I thought he was an Autobot. Not anymore. He's recognized as neutral by the Galactic Council. We've not heard anything from Tyrus since the Equatus trials. There were rumors that he'd... No, he's still out there. Trust me. We'll hand over Megatron with a recommendation that he be tried for crimes against the species. There's a further consideration. If found guilty... Megatron would be punished in one of two ways. Execution or life imprisonment. And you're telling us this now because... Because it's your choice. In genocide cases, under intergalactic law, the prosecution decides the sentence. At the risk of forfeiting the air of emotional detachment that I've spent years cultivating, I say we execute this comeback. An injection of rust to the brain, a single scraplet taken orally, whatever it takes. Just kill him and kill him quickly. Given that execution is permissible in law, I have to say I echo Prowl's sentiments. Megatron is, quite frankly, too dangerous to live. Wait a second. Kill him, and you risk turning him into a martyr. The Decepticons have been fragmenting for some time now. Executing their founding member might give them an excuse to regroup. Besides, I... I don't think it's right. It's not the Autobot way. I vote for imprisonment. I don't recall putting this to a vote. I appreciate your advice, everyone, but the decision is mine to make. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you sure that's appropriate? He has a point. Perhaps you should... It's Megatron. This rests with me. With respect, Optimus. How do we know that... <laughs> Let me start again. How can we be confident that he will make the right decision? I'm sorry. You closed the curtains on us back there, but you didn't shut down the audio feed. We overheard you and Megatron and- You listened in? And to be honest, it was all getting a little cozy. Get out! Get out! All of you! Out! They don't normally indulge in this sort of thing, but they're friends of mine, you know. Those cadets! The ones who crippled! I noticed that you've yet to make a sound. I'm afraid I consider that something of a challenge. You brought this on yourself, yeah? And when my life and my face connects with your brain and you start hemorrhaging sparks, I'll say you slip your bonds and attack me, and I have no choice but to defend myself. And your death won't mean anything to anyone. Just another dead miner, another wasted spark left no trace, another nobody. What the hell are you doing? Turn around and walk away, Springhorn. 
Here you see this. He's being set free. Captain's orders. Jeez, Whirl, what have you done? The captain played a hunch. He's new, he still believes in hunches, and called the bartender who said you'd stay out of the fight. Here he is, sir. You must be Megaton. It's Megatron, sir. T-R-O-N. Ah, as an electronic. This is yours. I couldn't help reading it. I hope you don't mind. I got it a bit about using pacifist rhetoric to facilitate political reform, and I thought, this doesn't sound like the kind of Cybertronian who'd rip the legs off two cadets and feed them into a trash compactor. I don't agree with everything you've written, but at least you're articulating your concerns. At least you're doing something. Keep it up. Come on, big guy. Okay, Megatron. No more small talk. You're going to tell me why you surrendered. You seem rattled. Perhaps you... Shut up! I don't have the time to spar. This is the last time we speak. Ah, so I am going to be killed. The decision's not yet been taken. That's why I'm here. To find out why you gave yourself up. Except... Except... That's not quite what you want to know, is it? Rephrase the question, Prime. Rephrase the question and I'll answer it. It's all because of you. Four million years. Four thousand millennia of conflict. Innocent worlds disfigured in pursuit of a demented ideology. Galactic conquest as, as some sort of polite for a crippling inferiority complex. Rephrase the question. Billions of lives ruined. Our race on the very brink of extinction. Rephrase the question. Do you... Do I what, Prime? Do I what? Do you even feel the slightest remorse? No. The misery. The suffering. And you regret nothing? Only that I didn't do more while I had the chance. All those you killed. Not enough! Not nearly enough! Understand this. So long as you stand in my way, so long as anybody stands in my way, I will respond by killing murder on an industrial scale. Because in the final analysis, I would happily wait across a river of corpses, chest deep, rust and grease and engine oil, just to crest the spark of the last old robot standing. And I would do so, not simply as a means to an end, no. I do it, Prime, because it would give me pleasure. You talk about killing. If I put a bullet between your eyes right now, the rest of the galaxy would stand up and applaud. And yet you stand there and keep talking. This isn't about me. Of course it's about you. It's always been about you. You're the most venerated Cybertronian who has ever lived. Hero, patriot, icon. And it's all thanks to me. Without this war, you'd be just another Autobot. Another wasted spark who left no trace. Another nobody. And that's why, deep down, you're glad for this war. What's a few million fatalities if it secures your legacy, eh? I know what you're doing. You're trying to goad me. You're trying to get a reaction. You want me to lash out at you. You want me to hurt you. Be careful what you wish for. <sighs> Rodion. What? You said Rodion. It was Rodion. I don't think I ever thanked you. You should have stopped me, Omega. The VVH. You should have cut the power. I did. Most of what you witnessed was aftershock. Without my intervention, his chances of survival were 1.3%. Optimus! Megatron! Did you find out why he surrendered? Did you find out what you wanted? I think so. And I think I just gave it to him. It's not electronic. Excuse me? My name, the Tron, is from Neutron. As in Bomb. Right. Okay, well... Enjoy the rest of your life, citizen. Hmm. This is the Iaconian Newsfeed Service bringing you coverage of this morning's scurrilous attack on the primal possession. Nominous Prime's fate remains unknown after a member of the 20,000-strong crowd blooms up 
while running toward the Matrix Bearer. Reporting live from Nova Plaza is Blaster. What's it like down there, Blaster? In a word, chaos. The deck door has already reached double figures, and medics are still pulling bodies from the wreckage. And while we wait for an update on Nominus Prime's condition, the Senate has denied rumors that the suicide bomber released Coelia Gravis or some other rusting agent into the air. Meanwhile, other rumors relate to who is responsible for the attack. No one has come forward, although the fact that the bomber switched to alt mode suggests that it is not the work of Triple M. However, it may be. Sorry to cut you off, Blaster, we are receiving reports that the Matrix flame is flickering. It's... wait a moment. It's flickering, but it's not... Repeat, not gone out. Which would suggest that Nominus Prime is still alive, albeit seriously injured. And now, where we will wait an official statement from Senator Proteus, an update on the electric storm that's about to hit the Tri-Penis Latorius state. The storm is already passing close to Praxis and Prodihex and cause Bad reception? It's the electrical storm. And something tells me things are gonna get a whole lot worse. I like what you've done with the place. And a trophy cabinet. Very impressive. Your predecessor used to go hunting for primitives. He had a... What are those organic things called? Those bipeds. You know, the hair and the opposable thumbs. From the nebula cluster? Nebulans! Yeah, he had a stuffed nebula mounted on that wall. Can I help you? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can. Orion Pax, you can call me officer. Or even better, you can tell me why you're here. We're looking for a friend of ours. Name of World. Works here. Worked. He's in custody at the moment, awaiting trial. Yeah, see, that's what we heard. Some misunderstanding involving a miner named Megatron. He attacked a suspect, I arrested him. Not much scope for misunderstanding. Nonetheless, we'd like to see him. I don't think that's in anyone's best interest. Do you? You're right, of course. Terrible business beating up a suspect. Can't have that, can we? I'm glad we see eye to eye. But I think you've made your point now, don't you? I think he's learned us a lesson. I think it's time we all moved on. I'll tell you what I think. I think it's time we left. He's a popular bot. Well, makes friends from all walks of life. From those at the bottom to those at the top. The very top. Him getting arrested, well, it could cause certain cybertronians a degree of embarrassment. I don't care if he shares a brand spark with Senator Proteus himself. He broke the law. First command post, yeah? They say you're making quite a name for yourself. He's turning the dead end around. Trouble is, the more you build something up, the more it hurts when it all comes crashing down. Are we done? Because I've got work to do. You've lived up to your reputation, officer. Shame. Not yet. Eh? You were about to ask me if I'd decided on Megatron's punishment. I heard what happened. You frassling him and all. Thought maybe now you'd want to see him. What? Executed? For playing me like a fool? Or merely in prison for life so I can stave off the guilt I feel, despite myself, for torturing him? Either way, Ratchet, my decision is flawed. Can't you channel the wisdom of the Matrix or something? Do you remember when I was given the Matrix? I don't know if given is the word I'd use, but yeah. It hurt. Bonding with it. Interfacing with it. Whatever the acceptable term is these days, it hurt like hell. I've always interpreted the pain as a kind of warning. Like the Matrix was saying, are you sure you want this responsibility? Are you sure? And now you're no longer sure. I'm just worried that I've become too dependent on it as a, as a moral compass. I don't know whether I can trust my own judgment anymore. Which is why, since you're here, I'd like to ask a favor. Unbelievable. On the streets since daybreak and not a single arrest. No MTs, no side dealers, not even a frickin' leaker. I don't know, Vilach. Maybe the Captain's zero tolerance approach is bearing fruit. What do you make of him? He's incredible. For the first time since you and I were posted here, I feel like we're making a difference. Changing lives. Does that sound lame? Hell yeah. Ha! Good. Let's go tell your hero the good news. The dead end is dead quiet, and the bad guys are nowhere to be. What in the name of the primal wellspring is going on? Ah, there you are. I tried to call you, but the comms have scrambled. Must be the storm. 
What are you looking at me like that for? I got restless. I needed to be out there, making a difference, changing lives. Come on, you can help me get this sorry bunch into the cells. Off to round up more bad guys. It's just something I need to get out of my system, Sprengar. When did it get into your system? I mean, you're really going for it today. Remember the miner from Tarn? The one with the data pad? Megatron, with an R. He was convinced that the Senate was institutionally corrupt. It was all in his writings. He had three questions he wanted to put to them, if he ever got the chance. The more I think about it... You are right, Captain? While you were on patrol, I was paid a visit by some rather unsavory characters. Part of the Senate security detail. Judging from their design, Sentinel's men. Oh, oh, which means, what, that Megatron was right? That's just it. I mean, a corrupt Senate? I can't countenance that. I just can't. This is going to sound stupid, but when I'm feeling, what's the word, disquieted, is that a word? When I feel disquieted, I try to channel the wisdom of the Matrix. It helps me find peace. I'm, uh, I'm not religious. Primus, Mortulus, Adaptus, all that stuff. I remain to be convinced. You believe in the Matrix, surely? Of course. But as far as I'm concerned, and I say this with the greatest respect, it's just a bauble. A powerful symbol? Absolutely. But nothing more than that. Now I feel embarrassed. The primal prophecies, the underbase, you probably think they were all made up by the Knights of Cybertron. I'm not even sure I believe in the Knights of Cybertron. Thank you, Springer. Sincerely. But I think I'll work through my disquiet in a more hands-on way. You wanted to see me, Optimus? If it's about you and Megatron being too comfortable in each other's company, I'm sorry I said that. The guy practically shot me in half. I find it difficult to warm to him. It's not about that. Forget about that. Rodimus, I'm going to ask you a question that I've never asked anyone before. Never been able to ask anyone. That sounds ominous. When you became one with the Matrix, how did it feel? How did it feel? Honestly? Between you and me. It felt wonderful. I don't know if I can describe. Actually, you know how one time in every million, your transformation card just sings and changing shape feels as natural as, as putting one foot in front of the other? That's how it felt. You? I... Yes. Yes. Something like that. Something like that. What the... We large dead. Nobody move! Look who it is! We were afraid we'd miss you, officer. Captain, please. This wasn't my idea. You're a liar! You're all liars! Wait. There were three of you. Ah! Ah! Don't like faceplates. Prefer to see him scream, you know. <laughs> Idiot. Where's he going? I'm not really one for macho sound bites, but in your case, I'll make an exception. Damn. I have to ask you one thing, officer. All those trophies, all those commendations, all those awards. What use are they to you now? <laughs> I'm sorry, Springarm. You deserve so much better than to die like this. Nice work, Pax. You're stuck inside a room so small you can't switch to alt mode, and your only weapons are a pair of purely decorative arm cannons. Come out and face it. At least your colleagues had the guts to confront us head on. Head on. It's funny, because, you know, we got up there. Yes, I know. I said it on purpose. Transformation cock's still warm, which means, in theory, it should be possible to... Hmm... If you're up there, Spring Arm, I hope you can forgive what I'm about to do to you. You hear that? You see? You see growling at us? No. That sounds more like an engine. Oh. You have the right to deactivate your vocal circuits. <clears throat> Anything you say will be recorded and replayed in a court of law. You have the right to a Sauron approved defense attorney. Do you understand these rights as they have been read to you? Ah!
Well, I really think you should stop now. I didn't ask them to rescue me. That wasn't a rescue. That was a slaughter. Touch me, and they'll hunt you down. That's not a threat. That's a warning. The Senate has eyes everywhere. Cross them, and they'll tear your world apart. Trust me, I've seen it happen. You have the right to walk away. Anything you say will be used to destroy you. I ask you, Captain, what are you going to do? We will not sit idly by while terrorists try to undermine our way of life. The attack on Nominus Prime will not go unpunished. We can't wage war against thin air, Senator Decimus. We still don't know who is behind the attack. Our head of security is weeding out the culprits. In the meantime, we protect the populace by clamping down. Sorry to disturb you, Sentinel, but we have a perimeter breach. Someone wanted to address the Senate. I wouldn't take no for an answer. Arrest him and be done with it. I'm trying to watch Senator Proteus make a speech that will change everything. We'll restrict passage across our orbital borders. We'll round up the agitators and the dissidents. We'll detain anyone without a valid serial code. Curfews, containment, capital punishment, whatever it takes. Sir, I've been told that a visitor has taken a part of Old Scotland, and he's heading this way. Scramble all units. Put it down. No! Senator Proteus is right. And if the clamp down means that the general populace must forgo some of their freedoms, well, it is but a small price to pay for their safety. And remember, we also have an opportunity to shut down those organizations who have been hostile towards us in the past. Triple M, the Cyber Utopians, the Malware Brigade. They should all be locked up. What now? Sir, I'm afraid that... That he's dead? Tell me he's dead. He... He's not dead. He's... He's here. Esteemed members of the 113th Cybertronian Senate, honorable descendants of the progenitors and custodians of the sacred primal lineage, I want a word with you. Everyone hold your fire. I want to see how this pans out. You dare interrupt the Senate in private session? Evidently. This is Whirl. He broke the law. Associates of yours wanted me to overlook that fact. I didn't. And two good officers died as a result. I want you to look at him and realize that even the smallest actions have consequences. You sit in session, detached from the real world, giving orders designed to keep the rest of us in check. And if anyone steps out of line, if anyone thinks a rogue part, you tighten the screws. And I didn't even realize this until I met a miner from Tarn. A friend who had so much to say that he couldn't find the words. A miner by design, but not by choice. He wanted the freedom to choose his own fate, not have it decided for him by a ruling elite who presumed to know best. And only now do I recognize the limits that you put on our freedom. And you do it because you are terrified of anything you can't control. They have a name for us, you know. Other races looking down, mapping our progress. They call us... Autobots. I've often wondered about that name. And now I realize the auto comes from automaton, one who leads a routine, monotonous life. And that's all we are to you, isn't it? Automatons. Our lives even more circumscribed from birth to death, ignition to burnout. It doesn't have to be like this. All of us, we could be so much more. Autobots. Autonomous. Free thinking. Masters of our own destiny. So as of today, as of right now, I am laying claim to that name. Henceforth, I am an Autobot, and it is Autobots like me who will outlive institutions like this one, unless you change your ways. Sentinel, remove him. My friend's name was Megatron, and he had three questions. Three things he said you should demand to know of any powerful institution. Question one. In whose interest do you exercise your power? You've said enough. Come along. Question two. To whom are you... Just let me finish. To whom are you accountable? And three... And three... How can we get rid of you? I didn't catch his name. It doesn't matter. You won't be seeing him again. You know why I'm here. You're here to tell me my fate. I wonder what took you so long. Megatron... I once stood before the Senate and gave a speech on your behalf. It was about freedom. And while you may have changed, I haven't. I'd give that same speech today. 
Freedom is the right of all sentient beings, and freedom is about choice. And so it seems entirely appropriate, when called upon to decide whether a sentient being should live or die, that I offer the being in question the opportunity to choose. So, if Chief Justice Tyrus finds you guilty, what's it to be? Death or imprisonment? Death. Optimus, I believe this is yours. Neat little thing. I was carrying it while giving Sunstreaker the once over, and now he's walking again. Thank you for looking after it while I decided what to do about Megatron. I needed to know if I was still the same person I was all those years ago, before I had the Matrix, when I couldn't rely on it for guidance. I could have answered that question for you. Thank you for agreeing to meet me. It's the least I could do. I gather I owe you my freedom. It wasn't easy, but I couldn't see a Cybertronian of your caliber get locked up in Garrus 1, or worse, sent to the Institute. You're a senator, aren't you? You were in the crowd when I held forth. Why did you save me after my diatribe? Because you were right, and because you were wrong. The Senate is worse than you've been led to believe. The attack on Nominus Prime was orchestrated by a faction within the Senate. Not that I can prove it. Yet. If that's true, why would they do that? So they'd have an excuse to move Nominus Prime into hiding. So they'd have unfettered access to the Matrix. And so they could find out how it creates life. The Knights of Cybertron called it the Creation Matrix. If certain members of the Senate can control the Matrix, they can control anything. There's a war coming, Orion. A war that will split this world in two. Battle lines are being drawn. Sites are being taken. It's just a matter of time. And what's my role in all of this? What do I do? You're a cop. Go back to work. Don't worry. I'll be in touch. Wait. Before you go, I feel different. Physically. You did more than just repair me, didn't you? While you were offline, I gave orders for you to be modified. Nothing to worry about. We merely created some extra space. You're a deep thinker, Optimus. Next time you're alone, I suggest you reflect on what's happened these last few days. You ask what your role is in all of this. Look inside yourself and you might find the answer.